couple of days ago, I received my NRF7002 development kit from Nordic Semiconductor. So let's see what's inside this box. We can see that we have our development kit PC and we have this NFC antenna that you can see on the left hand side. And we have this quick start guide sort of document here. And let's have this antenna on the table and let's observe our kit. I'll try to zoom in for better understanding it. We have this USB connection on the left hand side, which is the J-Link connection and we have another USB connection here. This one is the 7002 IC on the bottom and this is 5340 system on a chip. And we have this on-off switch on bottom left. You can see it right there. And we have two push buttons. You can see button one, button two, and we have this reset button. And the NFC antenna will be connected to this slot. If you would like to use it, you can insert it there. And on the back side of it, you can see the GPIO pins and their functions. As a detailed table, you can see on the back side of it. And there are two LEDs on the upper right next to that USB connection. We will use those LEDs as well. And we will use this USB connection on the left side, J-Link debugger connection. And let's connect our board to our laptop. And let's see what happens. Once we connect our development kit to the laptop, nothing happens because we didn't turn it on. So from the switch on the bottom left, we are going to turn it on. And you can see that LED blinking at the first time. So it's recognized by our computer as well, but still no devices found. So click on this refresh button and you will see your device, its properties. You can see that we have two virtual communication ports and you can raise the board, recover, reset. And from those virtual ports, you can just click on this connect to serial port in NRF terminal. So you don't have to use any other external terminal like putty so once you click on it and choose the correct settings you can see that it's connected now let's create a new application we will do our blinky application on this development kit so let's click on browse and let's write blinky to search for it and there we have the blinky example we can take a look at its content and then we click on select and we will click on create application and it's going to create the necessary folders the files for us the file that you can see on the screen right now is main.c and you can take a look at its content if you would like so it's going to blink the first led for one second it's going to turn it on for one second and turn off for one second so if we go to the applications folder and we add build configuration we choose our device as nrf 7002 and 5340 ns and we click on enable debug options and we click on build configuration 
I will skip this section and I will trim it so that you come to the end of the build. And as you can see, the build has finished right now. Now that our build is complete, let's make sure which board we chose. You can see that we chose underscore NS. And we can flash the build to our device by clicking on this icon. And you see that it says starting programming. However, it gave us a problem saying that you want to recover the device and reflash. So we click on yes. You can see that the programming is continuing and it says on the log parsing image file, verified programming, verified OK, applying pin reset. However, we don't see the LED blinking. You can see the LED 1 and LED 2. I searched the internet for this problem and I saw that this is related with the TFM that you have to enable. You can see this line that I commented out, wrote it and then commented out. You can see that entry is with underscore NS, non-secure. You need to include trusted firmware and TFM to your builds. And this is how you do it. You can see it in this documentation. You are going to config underscore build underscore with TFM. You're going to add this to your project.conf file and you're going to say that is equal to yes, meaning that it's enabled. So I added this line right now and I save the project.conf and I'm going to rebuild this. All settings are the same. So I click on build configuration and so it starts building the configuration once again by adding TFM to the build. And I'm going to trim this section for you once again. Now that the build is complete, we can flash it to our development kit by clicking on this icon. And it says building and programming. And let's observe our development kit. It's LED1. And now you can see that the LED one started blinking. Let's zoom in. So once we included the config with TFM, it worked perfectly. 